Okay, so you might have noticed that I haven't been here for quite a bit, but that's because I've just been having life stuff pop up. So I decided that I am just gonna talk at the camera and get back into it and kind of have an update video or just chat in general about a bunch of things, book and non-book related. I do have a bit of a haul that I did about a week ago as we are now allowed to book appointments in shops and if we want to go into them and I haven't been at my bookstore for <laughs> over six months I think so I decided that it's high time that I go and visit my local bookstore yeah buy some books so I will show you these in a second but first I'm just gonna talk about what it's been where I've been how it's been going and where I'm at currently sit back relax get a cup of uh, nice hot chocolate with water because my ass forgot that i could have non-dairy milk with hot chocolate you know hot chocolate powder so we're just drinking water hot chocolate i guess first of all where i've been i've had a lot of university work piled on top of me all at the same time. It's also that period of the year where you're just starting to get burnt out from education, especially as everything is online. It's just been really hard to do stuff and be motivated to do it. But I'm done with kind of the classes bit of it now and I only have my thesis left to do in a couple of exams in the summer, but pretty much I'm done with the attending class part. Uh, so now I have more time and I kind of want to get back into recording videos and posting them and just engaging with the community because I really miss it. I realized that a lot of the social comforts of life I've been getting from the internet in the last year, as we all have. So yes, there's literally nothing behind my absence except I've been busy and I've been burnt out and overworked and tired. Um, it's kind of why I didn't do a March wrap up, I think. Uh, because I only read two books in March anyway, one of which was The Way of Kings, which is massive. If for those of you who don't know, it's a high fantasy, large, going to be a very long series. It's a high fantasy series with very large, chonky books of over a thousand pages each. So that took me about three weeks to read The Way of Kings. I enjoyed it immensely. I'm very happy that I got roped into reading it. I, I should say, for those of you, if anybody's interested in, in popping into the high fantasy world before I obviously inevitably make a video about it, The Way of Kings is essentially a high fantasy set in a world, which I think is Roshar. It's many, many countries, uh, many, many people and many lands. And the focus of the first book is on uh, one of the lands that is, they're fighting against the Barshendi, which are people who have taken the credit for killing the king of these, uh, of the warring nation. Um, and now they're fighting for revenge. Uh, however, not all is as it seems and maybe they shouldn't be fighting them. Or there's a lot of setup in this book uh, because again, there's uh, this magic called soul, sh soul shards and shard casting. So essentially jewels that retain light from the storms that come in. So all of this massive continent is battered by high storms, which are these massive, extremely powerful storms that could potentially, they would kill you if you stay out. That was the entire point. Um, and very, very long time ago, the lands used to be populated by these people called the Radiants, who could bear, wear shard plate and uh, use shards um, more so than people can now. And they fought the Voidbringers, who they vanquished. That is all we know. But now, we just get thrown into a life millennia later and it's just a story as it starts out about these uh, different characters who are dealing with different aspects in their lands and currently it's to do with a war. And as you go further along, you kind of realize that it's <laughs> not what it seems. I think that the book is really, really good on ca character building. I sobbed three times in this entire book three times, like proper, you know, tears down my cheeks, like gasping for breath, because I think that it was just expertly done. I, I really understand why there's hype behind Brander Sanderson's work. 
and I will be one more of those voices. Uh, I do want to see what the next books bring because I think a lot of it could be built but so far the first book has just been impeccable. I really enjoyed it but that was kind of what I read in March. Um, I do think I also read our March read which was the Westing game and that video is edit is filmed. I need to edit it and put it up. So that's kind of in the works. And I also have a video already filmed uh, called the manga that I'm currently reading because I realized that unlike books, manga doesn't, you know, you can't really finish most manga. So I have a lot of series ongoing, which I'm just reading um, as it goes. And yeah, I recorded that video. I still need to edit, <laughs> edit it. I'm not sure how far I want to take editing. I don't know if any of you guys have that issue with um, or when watching videos, do you like videos that are better edited or less edited? Or would you like better edited videos but less times a week? Or just videos like this where I'm talking to the camera and but more often because editing takes a long time. I didn't realize how long editing took until I started doing YouTube. And to which I understand why people pay editors to edit their videos. And lastly, Another thing that I, that's happened is I recently got a skateboard. <laughs> now you might be thinking, um, this is by far not anything book related and I would agree with you 100%. Uh, however, my logic for getting a skateboard is that at my age, I want to try out more things that I didn't as a kid for various reasons. Skateboarding is usually seen as a guy thing, like little boys skateboard, not little girls. And on top of that, it just seems really cool. I want to learn how to do a kickflip. So back in the 1980s, doing a kickflip used to be like the biggest thing that you could do. And now it's just everybody can do it. So I want to, I want to learn how to do a kickflip. I also am just interested in having as many experiences as possible in order to be able to write about. So that is something else that I want to introduce on the channel. It's more to do with the experiences that we have or try to have and then talking about them using the words that you would when you're writing about them. Because the things that I find problematic in a lot of books is that people write about things that they imagine or have an experience. And that's fine. I mean, a lot of fantasy is based on stuff on, for example, wielding magic. And we don't really know how that feels, right? So it's not a bad thing to put yourself in that position and explain it but I do think that literature becomes just that little bit richer if you're capable of expressing the emotion not even the feeling but the emotions of going through these experiences and I want to learn skateboarding in order to be able to write about it and experience new emotions while doing so because a lot of skateboarding is about grit it's about facing being afraid of hitting the pavement and willing your body to do it anyway so i feel like that would be a good set of tools like a good little toolbox to use for fantasy where to know that feeling of i really don't want to do this or like my body's just screaming to say no and then doing it anyway but that could be a bit crazy you know like that i'm i'm completely <laughs> <laughs> completely aware that that might sound a bit crazy uh, therefore we're just gonna we're just gonna put it there maybe I will record some footage of me learning or after just describing how it went yeah well we'll see anywho uh, that is where we're at my hot chocolate water is getting cold so let me just and now for the haul. So my last haul was with the books that I got as a birthday present from my brother. And that was in January. When is my birthday? Oh my goodness. So I got a giant book box. I'll link the video there. Um, what I liked about that box is that you just basically told the bookkeepers uh, what genre you'd like. And then you just got picked the books for you. So it was really fun opening up a bunch of just unknown books <laughs> really. I went to the same bookshop. It's uh, the American Book Center in The Hague and I love it so much, so so much. If you're in The Hague um, or in the Netherlands then yes you can find English books. This is one of the places to do so. Um, and they also have a second story where you can find uh, just a nice selection of secondhand books. So you don't always have to break the bank to buy them. Anyway, uh, what I got this time, I came in, honestly, I came in with the 
purest intentions of getting one book and being like, ah, oh, I left the house for the first time in an amount of weeks. We're not going to say how many. And I'm buying these books. This is uh, this book, this, this book, <laughs> this book, this one book. This is great. I supported a local business. I helped my mental health cope with the thing that's happening around us. It's all good. Yeah, I left with seven, but I left with seven books. So what are they? First of all, it was The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I've read this series before, so I, there it's a huge world with a bunch of series. Um, and this is the first series of that world. Uh, and it is put in the same category as The Way of Kings. So this is high fantasy. It's very character driven. Um, there are a lot of sim similarities in the setting, kind of medieval Europe-ish setting, and I genuinely enjoyed this book. So why did I buy it? And why did I buy like a little, I guess, cheaper paperback? Because I want my brother to read it. So this was a present for my brother. And yeah, it, I do want to read the next books, in, the next trilogies in this series of books, but I will probably get the, more the collector's copy when I can just bigger font bigger thing but this is for my brother he will get to keep this lovely book and eventually I'll get him two and three I might reread this and then do another review of it or mention this it's really good I just remember really really enjoying it and the characters are just fantastic so yeah I'm honestly I might just reread this <laughs> so that's book one then I <laughs> Reading Six of Crows <laughs> started off as a meme. I'm not gonna lie. Six of Crows came around as a way of reading the most popular book in the booktube sphere for a very long time. Then, you know, we caught wind of the fact that a series is being released of Shadow and Bone and lo and behold, I am here buying the next book <laughs> <laughs> of the next duology after Six of Crows. So I read Shadow and Bone, the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Uh, my brother and I read this together because it's part of like this bigger project that we're doing, which will be on the channel eventually. Um, we read that and then I said, okay, I have a lot of thoughts about it. I have, we have a lot of thoughts about Six of Crows as you probably subscribe to the channel for. You can check out the videos. I'll link them somewhere up here as well. Um, so this is the th third series, the set, like the duology after set, uh, set after Six of Crows, and it involves a character from the Shadow and Bone trilogy and a character from, well, characters from the Shadow and Bone trilogy and a character from Six of Crows. So one of the six characters is in this book as the main character as well. So a sequel, a temporal sequel. And I'm excited to see what happens because I am very on the fence if I'm going to keep buying Bardugo's books because I really, really think that Six of Crows has a lot of good about it. And I think that I will definitely recommend it to somebody who might not even like reading that much because so much of it reads like a movie and it's dynamic and it's different. So I liked it. Shadow and Bone? Not going to spoil anything here, but I'm just gonna say my favorite book was book two. And if anybody's read Shadow and Bone, they will probably know what that means. Yeah, so I did not like the pacing at all of book three. And however, book three felt more like Six of Crows in its writing. So I'm confused and very worried about where any and all of it is going. So I decided, look, I don't have to buy the entire duology because I don't know if I'll like it, but we'll get this one and we'll see how it goes. That is the logic. How did you like Shadow and Bone? How did you like Six of Crows? Let me know. Let us talk. <laughs> Let us discuss. I'm really hoping because the characters from here are, the characters that are in this book, I really, really liked in Shadow and Bone. So that's all I'm saying. Hope, big, big thoughts about this. Then comes a book I picked up purely for the cover. I have never heard of this book before. And I think it's a series because it was in a row with different colored books, but it's called The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. I think it was originally in English. Yes. And from what I gather, it's about a female detective with a male assistant. 
and they travel through alternative worlds to solve crimes and mysteries. That is how I understand this book series to be. If you know more about it, or if you've ever read it, have you read it? Have you heard of it? Because I, this hasn't charted at all with me or on booktube, so I'm very interested to hear, to hear if anybody's read this. It just sounds cool. Honestly, female detective, her assistant, I can read the back actually. So Irene is a professional spy for the, spy for the mysterious library, which harvests fiction from different realities. Okay, this is already, you know, okay. I, I all of the, what I just said, <laughs> all of it, it's out the door. The, the blurb is so much more interesting than what I just said. Is a professional spy for the mysterious library, which harvests fiction from different realities. And along with her enigmatic assistant, Kai, love the name Kai, She's posted to an alternative London, their mission to retrieve a dangerous book. But when they arrive, it's already been stolen. London's underground fractions have prepared to fight to the very death to find her book. Hers italicized. italicized. Uh, adding to the jeopardy, this world is chaos infested, the laws of nature bent to allow supernatural creatures and unpredictable magic. Irene's new assistant is also hiding secrets of his own, and soon she's up to our eyebrows in a heady mix of danger, clues, and secret societies. Yet failure is not an option. The nature of reality is itself at stake. So it sounds really cool. And another thing, what I like is, uh, as it says here, harvests fiction from different realities, is the concept that they're going to travel to different worlds, which is why you have the entire series. I actually had a similar, I think I know why I picked this up. I mean, I did glance at the blurb um, after seeing just the general cover is I had a very similar idea when I was a kid and I want to see how it was executed in this book in case that I still feel like I want to write that one. Yeah, this uh, this looks really nice. It has really nice gold foiling. It just looks really cool. So that is that. And then next book is <laughs> book two. Ah, it's book two of the A Darker Shade of Magic trilogy. Now, I saw that these books were book twos and three, so from the start. If you don't know, I have a review on this channel uh, with one of my co-hosts, Johnny, um, discussing the first book, A Darker Shade of Magic, and we had really split opinions about this book. We really didn't know how to feel about it and what to do with it. And it was, there's a lot of thoughts, I'll link the video. And I was planning to borrow books two, two and three from the library. Uh, that didn't happen because the library has been closed ever since December. So I have library books on my shelves since December. And worse yet, I have unread library books on my bookshelf since December. Um, because having them for so long has really indulged my mood reading. Take from that what you will. But yeah, I decided, you know what, I want to read the second book. Uh, Johnny has agreed to read the second book with me and yeah, it's just gonna be, the review is gonna be just the two of us talking about it. I don't know what's happening. I don't wanna read the back. All I know is that I hope we get answers we didn't get in book one, but I'm glad it's, it's thicker. It, ooh, okay. It's definitely thicker than book one. I got the same edition, wow, okay, I'm surprised pleasantly surprised. That is basically that. And then the last book for fiction, I, I said I took seven books. I feel like I had more. Maybe I talked about one a lot. But the last one is I got myself another book date. Yay. I'm actually going to open it now after this video because I was saving it <laughs> wrapped up for this video. Uh, but yeah, I it basically says fantasy teacher student competition monochrome circus magic clocks fire and love i have a sneaking suspicion this might be the night circus by the same person who wrote the starless sea uh magnuson no did i just <laughs> did i just use my my friend's last name um yeah it might it, i think it might be this if not it still sounds really really cool and i just hope that i don't own anything like this because i don't think i've read anything like this but yeah if you want to know what's in here i will post it on my instagram stories and then highlight so you can watch it whenever but yeah you can follow me on instagram if this is something that interests you me talking about books and opening various book surprises yep 
that is it for the fiction. I also got two nonfiction books, one of which I don't have on me because it was for my brother. I found one on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So that was something that he's dealing with university right now. I thought it was a good find, especially in the discount section. So it's with him at the moment. Uh, and the other one that I bought, and that was partially because of the cover, partially because of the emotional tie that I have to these places, I bought Three Tigers, One Mountain. And this is a nonfiction book about the conflict and history between Korea, Japan, and China. Since I've lived uh, in Korea for a bit and I have been <laughs> partaking in Japanese culture by being an indul indulgent weeb for over 10 years now, 12 years, a long, a long time. This is something that was on my periphery, uh, even when I lived in Korea, went to plenty of museums and a lot of the history is influenced by both China and Japan. So I decided as a way of staying connected to that side of me, I want to read more and get myself more educated and see if there's any other sources that, or to see if there's anything else that I can go and read as a starting point from this one. Plus I think the cover's really nice. I mean, I would have to give props to them for, for designing something that looks appealing in a nonfiction sense. That is it. Because the bookstore is, um, not having a lot of people. Uh, they're also giving away free calendars and I took this one. It's wolves. It is my 10 year old self indulging in her wolf obsession. Once again, I don't really know where I'm going to put this. Uh, I know what I'm going to do with it after 2021 passes and that is cut out all the pictures and use them for various artistic uh, endeavors. But yeah, I think it's really nice. What can I say? It was a, it was a nice surprise honestly, that I was able to pick something up like that. But yeah, that is me. <laughs> I'm really happy to talk with you guys and talk uh, to the camera again because it's it's a nice feeling to know that it's something that you genuinely enjoy doing. But that's where I'm gonna leave it here. My chocolate water is getting cold and I need to drink it and go get dinner for a nice walk. Leave the house. That is something that I've been implementing and forcing onto myself is to leave the house for a walk everyone should do it. Please do so. If you're sitting at home and not doing that, we got to take care of ourselves and our mental health. Priority number one. Last thing, in case you didn't know, I the channel also has a Discord server. The links are in the description. So Discord is just a platform. I guess it's, it honestly reminds me of chat rooms slash forums, but mixed together, but more of a chat roomy type of thing. Anyway, uh, we hang out and that is where the book club and the writing club are located. So if you'd like to come read with us some really interesting books, um, then you're more than welcome to. The next session is going to be in a couple of days. Come in, join. We do prompt writing as well as working on our own personal projects, but just allocating space and room and time for that particular project. And we like to get feedback and talk about what we've done and how we've done it. So. Yeah, it's good fun. If you want a little community or you are just want new people to talk to, then you're more than welcome to. Anyway, hot chocolate water, gotta get my dinner, gotta go outside. That is where I'm at currently. There will be a lot more videos coming out. I know so because again, I have quite a few recorded already. So if you'd like to stick around, join me, then feel free to subscribe, yeah. That's me. Thanks so much for watching. I did feel like it was a little bit of a chat and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.